shared several curry goat recipes with you all. Every one of those are true tested winners. Yes, we are doing another curry goat recipe. This time, the difference is the technique. You would have never seen me use this technique for making curry goat. I have five pounds of goat, which I washed with cool water and the juice of one lime. Traditionally in the Caribbean, Granny and them will tell you don't use lime or lemon to wash goat, it toughens it. Most people will use flour. If that is your thing, go ahead. But let's put common sense to work for a second. Goat is considered a red meat. Besides the fact that goat is a red meat and red meat loves citric acid, which works as a tenderizer for all meats, not just red meat. Citric acid is a meat tenderizer. Let that sink in for a moment. Second, we'll be cooking this between two and three hours. Do you really think a little bit of lime juice will change anything? No, it won't. If anything, go back to number one, which is citric acid is a meat tenderizer. Three hours of cooking, or if you want to use the shortcut and use your uh, pressure cooker, by all means, rock that, but I'm on low and slow. And low and slow brings me to the third point. When you cook goat on high heat, any red meat, it will toughen. We will go low and slow two and a half, almost three hours. So consider those three things before you come criticize Uncle Chris for using the juice of a lime. If you wanted to use lemon, you know, use lemon. I have always washed my, my goat with lime juice or lemon juice. Five pounds of goat meat has been washed. I trimmed off most of the fat that I can. And yes, bones. There is a ton of bone in there, but we will get a lot of flavor from those bones. This pot is my workhorse. And you can see signs of that, that patina down there. Beauty. Anyhow, three tablespoons of oil. I am using olive oil. If you want to use vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, coconut oil, totally up to you. A nice big heavy pot, yeah? Medium flame, and I'm gonna go in with onions. And that is a medium onion, just sliced up. And a ton of garlic, yeah? That is about anywhere from 10 to 12 cloves of garlic that I smashed. I've got half of a scotch bonnet pepper that I sliced up. I like curry goat very spicy. You know, anything that takes a long time to cook, like curry goat, curry um, duck, curry beef, I just like it very spicy. That is just my personal choice. I'm gonna hit that with black pepper. And I'm gonna turn my heat down because I don't wanna burn anything here, but I want to pull out a ton of flavor from that garlic and that onion. Be mindful, that pepper is gonna be spicy. I included the seeds and everything, so if you want to not have that in there, totally up to you. Just gonna move that around, and while I have all that fun happening in the pot there, I have some cumin seeds, or what we call jira seeds. I'm just gonna go in with that in there. The recipe will be posted on CaribbeanPot.com within the next few days. So if you're looking for the ingredient list, you'll, you will have to head over there. I know someone complained recently and went on like a jack because I didn't have the ingredient list below the video. Listen, work for it a little bit. Head over to CaribbeanPod.com. You're not the only one wanted, so I'm making it generally available for people who don't follow me on YouTube, who don't follow me on Facebook, who don't follow me on Instagram to find it on CaribbeanPod.com. You can say thanks and move on, you know. No need to carry on like a mint compote. Kitchen is already smelling incredible with the combination of the garlic, the onion, the cumin. We're gonna add a punch of flavor. This is my Caribbean green seasoning. I'm going in with two and a half tablespoons. I will give this container a rinse. And if you're new to Caribbean cooking, Caribbean green seasoning, simply a blend or a puree of all the herbs we like using in our dishes in the Caribbean. Along with all those herbs, we also have garlic, seasoning peppers, AKA pimento peppers, all kind of lovely flavor ingredients in there, yeah? Did that one more quick stir. Man, I'm telling you, I already mentioned it about the kitchen smelling incredible. 
Hmm. It's an understatement at this point. In goes your favorite curry powder, and you need about three tablespoons of that curry powder. Um, if you're doing this gluten-free, please keep in mind that some curry powders tend to have, and I have seen it, fillers. So, you know, read the label and make sure you know, it's up to par to your gluten-free diet, yeah? My heat is still on medium-low. I'm just going to toast all the spices which makes up that curry powder. It's been about three minutes since I added the curry powder into the pot. I'm going to turn my heat up to medium-high now. We're going to go in with two cups of water. We're going to stir that. And if you recall, I said I was going to rinse out the container. I had my Caribbean green seasoning in. That is a further half cup of water. So two and a half cups of water. Give that a stir. Tomato, acidic as well, yeah? That's gonna bring balance. As it starts coming up to a boil, I want to go in with some allspice berries, totally optional, and I don't want much. Maybe about, we've got five of them. Visit your local Caribbean grocery store or West Indian grocery store. We've got Anchar Masala. And that's going to have a very strong roasted cumin flavor to it. We also need some bay leaf in there, a couple bay leaves. If you wanted to add a stick of ginger, I would highly recommend doing so. I'm not big on the ginger thing in curry, but if that is your... If, you, if it is a flavor you enjoy, I would recommend putting it in there. For those of you questioning the tomato in there, may I remind you that where curry dishes come from, tomato and curry is like adding salt and black pepper. It is normal. Why I like adding tomato in here, beyond the sort of balance from the acidity of it that I spoke about earlier, it also allows me to develop a lovely, thick, rich gravy. Not this watery thing that has just seeped through your rice like a strainer. No, we're not trying to use the rice as a strainer. We're trying to use the rice to capture that lovely thick gravy at the end. Now, we didn't season or marinate that goat. Remember that, right? But just think about all those flavors we have in here. And now what we're going to do is concentrate all of those flavors by cooking off all of the liquid there. <sighs> you see where I'm coming from? Uh -huh. It will take about 10 minutes for that liquid to burn down, yeah? What we're looking for is separation when we move your spoon or your spatula. I'm using the spatula here in my case here. You want to see that separation. You want to start seeing the oil that we started off with. My heat all the way up again to high because I want this to be searing hot as we add the pieces of washed goat meat in there. And the pieces, they're about an inch to two inches in, yeah, about two inches or so cut up. Now remember, you cannot cut this at home, eh? Get your butcher to cut it for you. You will mess up all your good knives if you try to do this at home with your cleaver. All I'm saying is, be warned. Now I'm gonna start adding my goat meat to the pot, like so. Boom, bam. No marination overnight or nothing like that, and I guarantee you, you will love the end result. I just gotta wash my hands. It's now time, and this is why we crank up the heat. It is now time to coat the pieces of goat with that lovely curry base that we created there. And you notice by cranking up the heat, while the temperature of the pot did drop a bit, you can still hear that sizzle going on, which is sort of searing the goat all nice and thin. Now that the pieces of goat are nice and coated, this is where now I'm going to go in with my salt and I'm using sea salt. Later on we can adjust the salt on there. I'm going to turn my heat down to medium and I'm going to put the lid, boom, on there. It's been on that medium heat for 12 minutes and you notice how much liquid it sprouted up naturally there. That is normal thing, don't fret about that. I'll just quickly show you the amount of liquid, yeah? What we want to do, as we did at the very start there when we created the curry base, we need to sort of burn off all that liquid, intensify the curry flavor. 
and infuse it within the goat before we start braising it. So that is a key component that is very old school. So what I'm gonna do, turn off my heat. We're gonna burn off all of that liquid. Now the next step you're gonna see me do, you're gonna say, well, Chris, that's counterintuitive because you're gonna be adding water. Yes, we need water to braise it after. But the point is we're gonna seal up that curry with that goat there with all that curry. Ay, 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 ay. Let me go and start getting my basmati rice ready here. This is the only time I like white rice. Other times, parboiled brown rice. But for now, we burn off all that liquid. Lid off. You saw me had the lid on before. Lid off now. It took about five minutes, but you can see all of that liquid is gone. We've got a lovely thick curry slurry on the bottom there along with all of the oils. You know, goat is a very, it can be fatty and it can be lean. In this case here, I <laughs> It is fatty. What I like doing at this point here now is while my heat is still on high, we're gonna go in with boiling water. We want hot water in there. We want enough water to cover, completely submerge the goat in there. Right? We're gonna turn our heat down. We want to get that to a simmer now and that is what's gonna be used to braise the goat. Before we finish things off, what I like doing is adding some more fresh thyme. Yes, there is thyme in the Caribbean green seasoning, but I like to repeat the sort of flavors sometimes when I cook. And I did mention that I like curry goat very spicy. So in goes a fatali pepper that has the sort of not as spicy, not as hot as a scotch bonnet pepper, but I'm telling you, boy, it's gonna give it a wicked little heat element that I so crave when I eat curry goat. And the reason for floating that pepper in there, you can use any pepper or you can just leave it out altogether. A habanero will work, another scotch bonnet will work in there. You have an option here. Later on, you can fish whatever whole pepper you use, you can fish it out don't break it at any point and you will get the flavor from the oils on the outside of that pepper. I man will break it because I, I, I like it fiery. What was I saying? All I'm gonna do now is turn this down just a little bit more. We're gonna put the lid on there. Boom, slightly a jar and let that cook for about two hours, man. It's been going on that simmer there for two and a half hours. Here is where now we're gonna start personalizing things. And I know two and a half hours is a long time, but I grew up eating curry goats. I wasn't the biggest fan of curry goats, to be honest with you, growing up on the islands. But everything mommy cooked was always fork tender. I mean, falling off the bone. So that is how I grew up enjoying it. And that is how I like to serve it, yeah? The springs of time has done its job. So I'm just gonna take that out. If you can, if you see the, um, the all spice berries like so yeah you can chop that into the rubbish as well the scotch bonnet pepper as you can see I already broke it here's where you're gonna personalize it just a bit more you're gonna taste it for salt the bay leaf has done its job in the rubbish I broke that pepper you can you know, just fish it out at this point here now we're gonna reduce this down just a bit more we're gonna make sure it's nice and tender we're gonna check for the salt we're gonna make sure the salt is to our liking. Another one of those all spice berries. And then the, the final sort of personalization is how thick you want the gravy. So at this point, you can see it's very, it's very liquidy, very watery, see? So what I'm gonna do now is crank up the heat. It's, I, I checked it, it is tender. I'm gonna, you know, look at that. Fall, fell off falling off the bowl, Natalia. I'm gonna crank up the heat, reduce the gravy down to my liking. Keep in mind, it will retain a lot of residual heat. So be mindful of that. I don't want to end up without any gravy. That's all I'm trying to say. With my heat on high, burning off that liquid just to thicken up the gravy a bit more. That is why we added the tomato. Remember I said at the very beginning of the video, we added tomato to help get that thick gravy later on. What I forgot to mention is that during that two and a half cooking process, that time there, 
Should you need to add more water, please add more water, yeah? You ain't trying to burn the good before, before things get nice and tender. I like finishing it off here now with parsley. I have chopped parsley here. And my reason for liking the chopped parsley is because goat can be pretty fatty. And I find, unlike cilantro, yeah, you can use cilantro, you can use shadow benny, uh, which is culantro. You can use both of those. Lately, I haven't been feeling that too much. But what I find is with the, with the chopped parsley, fresh from my garden, love it in the summertime, it kind of helps negate the, the, the fatty side of things. Speaking about fatty, if you want it, you can shut off the stove here. Push this aside, push all the, the goat pieces aside. Leave the liquid here. Allow the pot to cool, and then you're gonna see on the top, once the pot is cool, you will see all that fat at the top. You can scrape it off, dump it in the garbage, nut down your sink. Or the other option is, once you shut off the stove, get a couple ice cubes, big pieces of ice, and just move around in there. I'm sure you've seen it on the TikTok. And the ice will attract that fat, and it will um, it will uh, solidify on the ice, yeah? My gravy is almost perfect. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, long video, lots of talking, but as I've explained in many videos before, I just love explaining. So in goes all of that lovely chopped parsley. And again, the full recipe will be on the ingredient list, will be on CaribbeanPod.com within the next couple of days. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here, I'm really trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take me address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. Then we're just gonna hit that to stir to mix that parsley all the way through. And notice how that parsley immediately helps thicken the gravy as well too. I'm just gonna shut off my stove at this point. Remember, taste it for salt and adjust accordingly. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you all in the kitchen with me. Non-marinated curry goat. It will take a few hours, but it's well worth the wait. Turn off the stove and enjoy. Irie, Irie.